choose to assist the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. On all who are giving worship together, may we say, may we be the disciples of missions. But that the title for today is the masterpiece of missions. Today we are holding the Yeon Mission Sunday. Last week, the 24th World Missions Conference was held with the team that stand before the age of 237. Due to the COVID-19, everyone could not gather in one place, so the conference was held at Tukpyeong RUTC as well as 17 different towns. During last Friday's service, I preached about the mission's message about how we must live with the standard standards before the 237 age and the time schedule for standing as the summit of gospelization of the 237 nations, which is the core content. The moment that you receive salvation, you are a missionary. It hasn't been long since I received salvation or I don't know much about God. However, the moment that you have the assurance of salvation, you are the evangelist and you are the missionaries. So I hope that all you and believers can live the life that creates the masterpiece of missions just like today's title through the Covenant Church. This is the Great Commission that Jesus had given to us. This is the greatest commission. With the standards created by the UN, it is known that 237 nations are in this world right now. Therefore, that is why we are using the number 237. However, even though there are 237 nations, there are various opinions on the number of tribes. Ralph Winter, a famous mission scholar, is revealing that there are 24,000 tribes in this world following the unreached people, missions, organizations, Joshua Project, 17,500 tribes have been estimated. Amongst these, the empty place of missions that we must have interest in is in the nations of the unreached people. The unreached people refer to the tribal groups that can evangelize themselves with the help of other countries and have no Christian community. And the total percentage of Christians in that tribe is under 2%. Amongst the unreached tribes, there are currently under 20% that are gospelized, and of these, 7,400 of them are in China. Japan goes in this group as well. 42% of this world is 3.2 million pe billion people. China, whose percentage of the gospel is under 0.01% and has 4,800 tribes and has a population of 1.8 billion people. There are differences in the numbers calculated by each mission organized, but universally, it can be seen that around half of the world's population have still not held or heard of the gospel. Then needless to say, there will be so many people who have not experienced the truth of the true gospel as you have. To this extent, it is saying that there are so many empty places of the mission fields that we must go. What is the reason for having Mission Sunday every year? UN Church itself is a church established from missions. We are reaffirming to this spiritual intention and making new challenges to head out towards missing places in the fields of the world. Go down the plain and look at the region of Kangsa. There are so many red crosses. There are more churches than coffee shops. So when I first established a church, I questioned God, why do I need to build a church? And God said it was due to missions. 
And with that, for a start, we are confirming that every year. And we're making new challenges with that. And there are many people who are not interested in missions, but it is giving that opportunity for them to have this interest. So due to the COVID-19, missionaries could not be here with us together for this year's Mission Sunday, but we are doing it online. And the Ukrainian missionary is still not able to go back as there are no planes. So we're giving this worship online in different mission fields as the missions still has to go on. So you have to hold on to this. So I bless in the name of the Lord that may all members and missionaries of Yeon Church will be able to clearly hold on to the fact that missions will continue throughout any situations under the light of making the most wonderful and evidential masterpiece of missions. Number one, platform of missions. The scripture of today is the last word of the book of Matthew. Including the book of Matthew, if you look at the features of the four Gospels, you can see in the last part that they are always ending by presenting a vision of missions. The book of Matthew ends with the message that we should take all nations into the disciples. The book of Mark ends with telling us to go around all over the world as being the witness of the gospel to the disciples. The book of Mark ends with telling us to go around all the world. And the Lord will always be working with those who spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. God has given us this heart. The book of John ends with Peter, who is in frustration and despair after denying Jesus, being healed and restored after finding Jesus who resurrected and re receiving the new mission to be his lambs. He was granted a mission of spreading the gospel. The last part of the gospel book of Luke records the contents to which they are told to wait for the promised Holy Spirit. And in the book of Acts, which is the sequel to the book of Luke, it records the answer of missions that was conducted after receiving the actual Holy Spirit. In simple words, all four Gospels emphasize that the fact of missions, which is the meaning of gospelization of different cultures, is the reason to the children of God that we have received salvation through Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 4, which is the scripture today, starts off with the resurrection of Jesus Christ and ends with the vision of missions. We can simply think of it as a temporal arrangement based on the timeline, but it has a very important meaning behind it. It shows that missions is not something that can be done through our strength, power, or will, but rather through the strength received by the power of the resurrected Jesus Christ. Without the faith of resurrections, missions cannot be done. So you must clearly hold on to the fact of the platform of missions within the resurrection of Jesus Christ. If you don't have resurrection, then believing in Jesus is of no use. Only the Christians only believe in this fact that Jesus has resurrected. The fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross and resurrected in three days is the core of cores of the gospel. The core of cores. It is simply ended at the crucifixion on the cross, then we could not know how our problems of sin and death were solved. At that time, many robbers were crucified on the cross as well. And if it ends there, there is no meaning. However, the resurrection of Jesus Christ shows that we have been solved of our burdens of sin and constraints of death. All have been solved. All the sin that we committed in front of God has been finished. The disciples of the early church penetrated the field as witnesses of this resurrection. 
If we look at Acts chapter 1, verse 22, there are the raising of new disciples due to the death of Judas. And the core requirement appears beginning from the baptism of John until the day when he was taken up from us. One of these men must become with us a witness of his resurrection. Someone who will testify to the resurrection of Jesus to be equipped with the faith of resurrection was the first priority in requirements to become the disciple. As well as this, the fact that they could boldly proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ within the situation that was filled with the threatening of the Jewish authorities and not knowing when or how they could die was because they had the faith of resurrection. Especially the core of the sermons of Peter, the apostles of Jews, as well as the core of the sermons of Paul, the apostle of Gentiles, were all focused on the resurrection of Christ. In Acts chapter 2, verse 32, Peter proclaims, This Jesus raised up. And that we are all witnesses. This Jesus God raised up, and of all our witnesses. The witnesses are the ones who saw this, who saw death and resurrection. If we look at Acts chapter 13, verse 20, when Paul was relaying the gospel at Antioch, of his he proclaimed the resurrection of Jesus Christ, but God raised him from the dead. In Thessalonica of Acts chapter 17, the evangelism of Athens, and when pleading before King Agrippa in Acts chapter 26, he proclaimed the news of resurrection. When this resurrection was being proclaimed, there was much persecution, and people were saying that he was crazy. And wherever Paul went, he proclaimed the name of the resurrected King, Jesus. Just like this, the resurrection is the core of missions and the gospel movement to the point where we can say gospel without resurrection is not the gospel. However, this kind of faith is not deeply rooted in the believer's mind, even though it is critical. Other religions are good at doing this too. The Catholic Church or the Buddhist temples. But may you believe that only in Christianity there is salvation. The core is resurrection. It is not rooted. Only on Easter, which comes once a year, people remember and commemorate Jesus Christ who was resurrected in their lives, in the 365 days. They don't have this faith of resurrection and influence as they forget. If we lose hold of this faith of resurrection, our spirits might become powerless. You don't have the strength. You don't have this power to fight. And you just live with your logic, pride with your physical body, only talking about yourselves, me, following what is of my profit, my emotions, my pride. That's how people live. The walk of faith is supposed to be the channel that we gain Jesus Christ strength through. And that is why Satan tries very hard to attack us, to lose hold of this. So it is the power of the Holy Spirit. So you have to live with this. So while living our lives, it is not difficult to live. Do not say that it is difficult. It is difficult because you are doing it. With the strength of God, it is not difficult. Even people get murdered being stoned to death. And like Stephen, he said, may they not have the sin come upon them as they do not know what they are doing. 
you're able to pray for others. Doing the work of the Lord, you're doing it with the strength of God. Oh, that person is doing it with the strength of God. So it's always praise, always thanksgiving. It's not receiving scars, giving scars, going in debt. Do not do it. Oh, I went into trials. Do not say that. Going into trials, doing it because you have to. Why do you have to do that? Saying pessimistic words. Do not do that. Do not say that it is difficult. Of course it is difficult. After I come down from the pulpit, I am tired as well. Of course we are men, so we are tired because we have the physical body. But with that, do not complain. You must have the strength of God and say, because I was used, I am so thankful. So may you be thankful. Do you know where Satan attacks? He attacks so that you will lose hold of this faith of resurrection. Forget about it. Forget about resurrection. So he makes it so that people will live like the non-believers or other religious people. Look at verses 16 to 17. It shows how Satan tries to. Do this. Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee and the mountains which Jesus had directed them, and when they saw how they worshipped him, some doubted. It says that they are the disciples of Jesus. And the eleven disciples worshipped Jesus when they saw how he was resurrected, but there are still some doubts. And we're talking about the 11 disciples. So that the fact is that you can just imagine what Satan could have done to the people who didn't witness Jesus after he resurrected. So people who resurrected doubted, who saw the resurrection doubted. So of course the people who didn't would have been doubtful even more. Even more like that. So we doubt. And there are those snare, snares of doubt. But those who are the witness, they soar like the eagles 365 days a year. Reverend Billy Graham, who was a renowned evangelist, once said this about resurrection. If I was an antichrist, I would have first attacked people's belief regarding the resurrection since it is the foundation of Christianity. He would have said, Res resurrection is fake. There is no such thing. Like that, Satan is trying hard to make our faith of resurrection become weak. A German professor, Waltzman, said that there are two mountains that Christians must climb over. One is called the mountain of creation from the Old Testament, and the other is the mountain of resurrection from the New Testament. He argues that whoever conquers these two mountains are the people of God, which we all call Christians. And in honesty, Resurrection is just like creation because the works of recreation was fulfilled through the resurrection. That is exactly why this blessing of resurrection and faith of resurrection must be the platform of the missions so that we could continue this work with one heart, whole heart, and continuation without tripping over. So the word resurrection is not simple terms. So the faith of resurrection is the power of recreation. It has to be the platform of missions as it does not shake, going one heart, whole heart, and continuation. That is the most important strength. I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all you one believers be the main figures 
of evangelization of the tutors of nations in any given situation by the power of resurrection of Jesus Christ. Number two, vision for the tutors of missions. Verses 18 to 20 reads, And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I am with you always in the end of the age. This is the message of calling the disciples who are left in this land. To simplify this calling into one sentence, it is saying, Go and therefore make disciples of all nations. Make disciples. If you take a look at today's scripture, there are many simultaneous expressions. Go therefore make disciples of all nations, baptizing them and teaching them to observe. Among these four expressions, there is the main verb in the original language language, that is, make disciples of all nations. Jesus gave us the vision of the 237 missions and emphasizes that the core is to make the disciples. So far, the Korean churches tended to think about sending because of the expression, go there, which appears first in the scripture. However, if you interpret the word of Jesus, it is about nurturing the disciples. So when people talk about missions, they talk about sending the missionary. I was like that too. After I established the church for two years, I was sending missionaries off. And I thought that was missions. Why? Because go there was first. However, what Jesus left throughout the three years of his public life is the disciples, not the crowd. But the people do not know how to nourish the disciples. So missions will not continue. Wherever Paul went, there was the couple of Priscilla and Aquila and Gaius. He had many disciples. And he would raise the disciples and leave. So that is the Taiwan system as well. So the missionaries must have that system of giving the team and giving the message and mission and having that team. So some churches, they make the church, gather the congregation, and send off disciples. So one missionary went to Kenya, and he said, oh, Kenya is so great, come and see. And then one person said, oh, I'm going to Tanzania. And then I went, and it was not there. It's because they don't have the message. So they are not doing the biblical missions. So America, France, Australia, the missionaries are coming out. So they're all in the cities. And most people are Korean in the Western countries. So we're told to do the gospelization of different nations, but it's all of the same nation. So within that base, you have to go through the different tribes and centered on them with the finance. You have to use that person and like LA, if they go to LA, there are natives. And they're going into those tribes. And that is the multi ethnic field that we have to find. So sending or going is not everything about missions. The point of raising the absolute disciple, the point is raising the absolute disciple 
of Jesus Christ. Oh, there can be crowds. But when Jesus was leaving, he had 12 disciples. So it's like that for the different departments and ministries as well. The pastor has to focus on finding the disciples. I did it myself. But now, I have disciples doing it for me. So, the ministerial pastor should not be busy. If so, then the system is saying, you do it. But the disciples have to be raised continuously. And that is the ministry of Jesus. Missions is not just about going and sending. It is the point of raising the absolute disciple of Jesus Christ. The disciple does not change the disciple that has been set upon the firm foundation. If this happens, the kingdom of God will continue to expand. Then how can we fulfill this mission? Before Jesus talked about the mission of raising the disciples, and he had an important proclamation to the disciples. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. And at last, I am with you always to the end of the age. I am with you always to the end of the age. These two expressions are the words that concretely expresses how we can handle the two, three, seven missions that Jesus had preached. Jesus Christ who has all authority in heaven and on earth, will be the strong background and evangelist. What can we do? What do we know? What do we have? How can we do it? Only the Lord, who has all authority in heaven and on earth, can do this. We're going with this promise, with that covenant. So even if we mimic doing missions, even if you have that heart, God will have an interest. Look at the evidence. For many decades, we've done missions and did evangelism camps. And there are regions that I went for every year or for 10 years. And when we went to Kenya, there were many people who went. And even in the slums, we went. But we never had an accident. We would go around, but there was no one who was sick. It was the evidence that God was with us. In the name of Jesus Christ, when his name is proclaimed, all the forces of darkness will be bowed. And that happens. The kingdom of God will reign. Jesus Christ has all power of heaven and earth. He is our background. Then it is finished. He's saying that he will be your strong background, so why do you have to fear or hesitate? It is finished. Missionary Stanley Jones in India read the history of the church found in the article pondering about how the early church members lived. He was reading the book regarding this, and this is what the missionary found. He found that the early church members said to each other when they knew that they were the time of persecution, now the time of grace is back again. Looking at these records, Missionary Jones wrote that impression in his diary, saying the early church members saw God who rebuilds at times in the ruins without seeing the ruins. They saw God working in darkness without seeing the world full of sin. They saw mourning in the dark. They are different. They are living a spiritual life. Problems 
and ruins are not problems and ruins. It's a time to receive grace. Amen. When you receive hardships, then it is a time to receive grace. Do not do the favors of Satan, whether it is good or bad. The hardships is the time of grace. Those who factually believe will soar like an eagle no matter what problems may come. This will happen. The core of God's authority is Jesus Christ. So even if you have problems, it does not matter, as you will not go back like an angel soars across the sky. The core of God's authority is Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, all the power is given. The authority is bound to appear through the works of the Holy Spirit. It will be revealed. That is why it is the Holy Spirit. Acts 1.8 reads, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will be the witness. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of the Holy Spirit. So at this time, may the Holy Spirit reign upon us. May the Holy Spirit be upon me. May the Holy Spirit give me new power. May the Holy Spirit encourage me and comfort me. So that is our prayer that we have to have in our lives, but how come you do not do so? If you do not do so, then you will be able to reveal your pride. And you'll be able to say that you live or die because of that, crying and laughing because of that. So until when are you going to do such a walk of faith? So may you be alert. Due to the COVID-19, many missionaries are not able to join us and many restrictions follow the mission fields. And you know this very well. The airplanes don't fly. And if someone goes overseas, they have to be separated for two weeks. However, we must properly utilize this time. We must question ourselves. How many disciples, like the disciple of Christ, did we raise until now, even in the restricted circumstances? Am I raising the disciples? You have to examine yourself at this time. If there are disciples who will not fall down, even though if you leave that mission field, it means that you did the biblical mission. May you examine that. If you did not raise a disciple who can continue the ministry, you will renew all of your mission ministry. You must change it. Missionaries should not be trapped inside the limitation of my life. You must break the negative frames of thinking, I cannot do this because of this and that. Those are all excuses. Those are your limitations that you face because you're doing it. Being self-centeredness, that will change into being able to think pessimistically. What will matter if Jesus Christ, who has the authority of all heaven and earth, is working within me. You must go into the field with the accurate assurance. I will also be a spiritual motivator for each mission field after I retire this church. And I will go to the empty places of mission fields so that the right gospel movement and mission development arises in the mission fields. In the first round, I will go to where our mission field is. And in the second round, I will go where the headquarters mission field is. And I will see and determine what they need. And it's not just listening to what they need from here, but if they need a school, if they need a summit center, I would go and see what they need. And I will help the missionaries and doing this team ministry. 
So we are right now doing the uni world. So in Kenya, we're holding missionary in Kim Dong-ki and uni world supported them. And I'm the CEO and we help them. And there are three uni world employees going and helping and serving. And even in the Philippines, the uni world and that's where the mission field was raised. And that is the background. So that is the NGO. So even if you don't, if you don't wear the NGO gown, you will not be able to help the schools. So the union world is being in the forefront. Make it that. So may you pray for the union world. And it's a very important ministry. So we're doing that within our church. So other ministries, they cannot do the NGOs because we need the ability to speak English. So in order to see the person to give and receive, you need to know those characteristics. So you must be able to pray for a new world so it will be the foundation of missions because we need the new mission field. So I'm thinking that when I go, I want to help the new world and the NGO fields and giving them aid of the government and making new items in order to do so. So those who want to be a co-worker of this min mission ministry with me should prepare starting from now in prayer. The mission field development is the greatest privilege and blessing given by God. You must build an economic foundation to co-work in the mission ministry. And there is this reason. So you have to be healthy as well. Because if you go there and say that you're always sick, then it is not good. So Pastor Yu, he made a request in the headquarters upon the committee members. May we be able to gather the finance for missions and to have that business so it's a secret, but as I was saying this, it just came up. So going and sending, being able to find the expenses for that. So right now we have to do missions, and just like Priscilla and Michaela was helping Paul and Gaius being toast. So biblically, may we have many people like this, and in order to do so, we're preparing as well. The field church officers. So may every one of you be the field lay officers like Priscilla and Aquila, who can team be a team minister with whoever you meet. Letting other people know the taste of missions, of the gospel. Amen. Amen. So I hope every U1 church member embraces the heart of 237 missions journey. So I bless you in the name of the Lord that may all of you be the mission witness who stands first in the field of missionary in your life and challenge toward the entire world with the faith. This is the conclusion. Somebody asked to the Duke of Wellington to, who defeated the Napoleon army in the Battle of Waterloo on what he thought about missions. Then the Duke of Wellington replied, it is like a march order. In the army, they have a lot of marches. And he said it was like a march order. What does that mean? What it means is that missions is not something you choose to do or not. It is 
order that you must fulfill. That is what, is what it means in order to do this. And the author of The Challenge of Missions, Oswald J. Smith, said, how can people who listen to the gospel to tongues and people who are dying even without hearing the gospel once exist? How come someone is getting ready for Jesus' resurrection, but others die even without hearing the first coming of Jesus? This is the cry of resentment of saving the souls. So we must help them to at least hear it once. So I bless all members of your church to be the mission disciples who embraces the confidential witness who creates the 237 mission masterpiece. Let us pray. Dear Father Lord, upon this mission Sunday, may our life be the masterpiece of missions. May it be the missions of platform. May we be able to be the disciples of missions, not having any reason or excuse. May we live a life that starts in giving all in for missions and preparing for missions. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.